Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It is July the 9th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and uh, this will be our last one for the week. I take off Fridays during the summer, and we'll take tomorrow off. Uh, we're finally getting a little sunshine and no rain here, so hopefully we can uh, have a good weekend here for a change. Uh, the market's really been rallying in the after hours, so I'm not sure if some news came out or uh, whatever, but... Uh, just notice this too. Look at that gap right over that line. Uh, you'll see. You'll hear me point that out a lot. Um, and this line was there way before that gap was there. So, um, but anyway, let me back out again. It's, it's pretty much been all downhill since the open. There's some shorter term trends, and all you really needed was the short term ones. But uh, in the end, there's a larger two tier channel. It didn't really work off the high here. Uh, I guess the downtrend, you probably could say it really didn't start strongly until here. We had a little down move, but it looked like we may get that second leg up like this. And I talked about it in the um, midday chart today that, you know, it just didn't seem possible that we would get a measured move similar to this leg here from here. And uh, but if it did start rallying and going higher, you can't count it out because I've you know it all it, it works out more times than it doesn't. But in the end, you see, we got here's your first leg down, and then if you measure that, we got a perfect measured move and then a little more push down from that. Um, but that would have given you a great target on this first move down, and uh, it took a little bit of time to work through this support area right in here, but it moved on down. Uh, then we traded back up, and uh, that got us well into the 2 o'clock hour or so. But in the end, there's a two-tier. This channel was not easy to find by any means. I, I drew it off the swings off the low and then drug it up later, and it did end up uh, working out. But, it, it, you know, by the time this came along, you didn't need it anyway. So you really just needed to work off those shorter-term ones, and that's why I'm always preaching, you know, use your short-term trend lines. Uh, because they do make a difference. But let's back out a little bit and talk about the trades. Uh, first trade I saw this morning was um, this trade right here. It was well, I'd, you know, I sat here for quite a while. It was a little slow at first. Uh, you can see that first trade was, it was almost right before the open before that came out. So, okay, I can't even get two minutes into this thing without an interruption. I apologize. But, uh, yeah, the first trade I saw it was almost 8.30 before we had the first setup here. Um, we just kind of meandered around, still heading up on this trend. Uh, but this was the first pull back to the trend line. And the trend line's pretty, you know, fairly obvious right up through here. It's really off of the closes there. And you can see we bounced right there and the close held again. Um, that's a, like a breakout pullback long, but the main thing is it's a failed second entry short. Uh, we tried to go short twice um, off of this little double top right here uh, after breaking above it. And uh, so and it is right off the trend line. It, technically, we didn't make a new low here, so it's not a failed second entry short, but it, it basically is one leg up, correction, and a measured leg up, and then a failed move down and there's a big bearish bar there so you know a lot of people got trapped just go long right there that was a quick easy move and this is one where you catch a runner and um, you could uh, you know, we did get a break here so you might have exited but um, if you held on you know you get two measured legs out of this this leg here is almost perfectly um, I haven't measured it but just eyeballing it, I can tell it looks like a perfect measured move if it's not a perfect one it's very close. You can see I think we missed it by a tick, so close enough. Um, and then we got that little, notice how this move didn't go much further than this one. And then that little jog up, and we tested it again, and boom, it sold off. It's tempting to go short right there, and you really could. Um, but I think it's better to wait and make sure we're going to get through the EMA. Uh, here and then by the time we got this little move there is a failed second entry long there. I probably should circle that one green um, I will go back and circle it green Because there is a trap right there, but I, I didn't like it. I'll, t I'll explain why I didn't originally circle it um, Was because Look how flat that is and the dojis and all the overlap, but notice the new high pullback first entry pullback second entry 
and uh, it fails and it goes out the top and then goes out the bottom. So, um, you know, a lot of people are going to take that tray. And so if you took it, that's okay. And then it comes back. You got that little double top right there and you really tested it. So you've tested that level three times. It turns down again. It's a first entry counting off the lows, but um, notice how everything's below the EMA. And the main thing I liked about it was if you drew your uh, trend line, originally I had it a little higher here. I adjusted it down some. Um, and you drag it up, it fits perfectly there. So that's why I was looking for prices to turn down there. Um, this one might could go green. This is real borderline because it is a first entry. But it's also a breakout pullback short because that is a little congestion area and it pulls back and tests it and then goes lower. Um, and you can see it bouncing off that lower uh, trend channel line. Um, so, but there's no shorts in here, somebody, or longs in here. Somebody asked me about a long here. It worked, uh, but you don't want to go long here. Um, the only reason you might consider going long there is there is some support right across here and you can see that support right across there so um, you, you might want to treat that like a failed break lower but we actually got lower than that right here as well and uh, so I don't think you want to try to trade that like a failed breakout this is not right you know this is a more of a reversal pattern than it is a, a range type pattern um, so, but, but really this is still almost like a double or triple top. So you can almost treat that like a new high and then a first entry long, second entry long, even though it didn't fail, it's, you can treat it like one. So there's several different reasons, um, why I like these two shorts right here. This, this one really confirmed the trend line and that's why I like that one. But going back to this one. Even though that didn't quite close on its low, it has a little bit of green. It still closed below the EMA, and that was just ticking back and forth. It could have easily, and on your chart, it might be real bearish. Uh, it might even be bullish on yours. If it is, you wouldn't be interested in that trade. But uh, uh, that's the thing about volume and tick charts. There's no two are alike, and yours is never going to look like mine. But some trades will look better on my chart. Others will look better on yours. So nothing you can do about it. But I did like this one. You had the little bitty doji broke higher it tried to go lower but still once it broke lower there uh like i said you that's a breakout pullback short it confirms the trend line um if you waited on the second entry it came here but then it's still another first entry um actually that's not the second entry the second entry didn't come here because this is still a first entry here and then it pulls back and uh you got a good setup there haven't taken that one i wouldn't have risked another one here uh, especially when it didn't get down to the trend line, but when it broke higher again here and then turned out, look how bearish that bar is. Just go short right there. That's a good trade. And then again, you got another first entry here. Um, again, it's, I think you're better off to wait. And then you get a failed second entry long there. I wouldn't, you wouldn't take any of these except for the fact that this is a trap. Um, because we, we've had a break and a new low already, but when you get that, notice the new high, pull back first entry, pull back second entry, and when it fails and turns down, you can go short right there. And if you didn't go short on that first bar, look at this second one. Uh, let it break below and then drop a limit order back, maybe or maybe just put it right there where you would have gotten filled the first time, but it pulled back a couple, a couple of ticks um, before it went on down, so that turned out to be a nice trap there. Uh, and then I wouldn't risk any more shorts after that, but there was a second entry short here. Uh, we've already had your break and you've got two really measured legs down. So now it's getting risky going short anymore. And somebody, the same person asked me about that as well. You know, um, they're trying to get long several times. You can see it actually went further than a measured move. They try to get long several times and they finally try to get decide to get short and they wait till right here and then it's too late you know the prices the reversal pattern you've already had your break of the trend line a couple of legs down to a new low and uh and you don't have a very good signal bar here at least not on my chart so this is where you're expecting a failure and uh and it fails and turns up it's tempting to go long right there 
but I think you got to wait. Um, I think you're better off to wait on the next pullback, and when it turns down it up, it goes below this little doji first and then goes out the upper side. So your long is really one tick over that little doji, but even this bigger bar, I, would, I wouldn't have any problem with it breaking higher than that and then dropping a limit order in there, a tick or two back, and catching that ride as well. Um, there's actually a failed second entry short right there. That one should have been, uh, I meant to circle that one in green, and I forgot to circle it. Um, and the only reason it's green is because we've mostly been down, and you're already getting a big bearish close here, but this is a new low, swing low, because it's lower than that one. So pull back first entry, pull back second entry. Um, it's right off the EMA. Everything's above the EMA. It's the first break of the trend line. Uh, so there's multiple reasons to be consider that one. And it's, it's real borderline just being able to mark it blue. But, um, but I, I'm going to mark that one green So uh, because it's, it's just a little risky. Uh, because I, because of the um, big bearish bar right there, and uh, there's a couple of other reasons really, but uh, that's the main reason, and the fact that the bias has really been down, and although this looks like a, although this is a kind of a reversal pattern, it doesn't look like the big reversal that leads to a big move. So we still were finding resistance here at the EMA, and even when we got through, we still had to test it a couple of times on both sides. So this might just be a short-term correction in a bigger pattern, which is exactly what it turned out to be. Uh, and you and you really don't know exactly where that trend line is. I actually had one drawn here just in case that kind of worked down through here. Um, so this could have been the first break of, this might have been the bigger one here in the first break. And, you know, just a lot of different reasons why you got to be real careful there's not very much room before scalping out there either. So, but there is the trap. So I'm marking it green. Uh, that's enough on that one. Um, and then this is what kind of a reversal pattern looks like. Look how it rushes down and it goes right through the EMA. And then it pulls back and it's still closing below it. It's really tempting to go short there. But again, um, I think you want to wait and see if you get that trap and you get it right here. So there's a, um, You actually want, actually you don't want to take this one until uh, the second entry, and even and this one still. Let me explain this because this is a little bit confusing here. Let me move all this. Notice the move up, the pull back, the second move up, and then the big bearish bar. Um, this little line's confusing it. Uh, so that's a second entry right there and everything is below the EMA and there's a and it's actually a failed second entry long right there too um, so that's why I like that one and if hang on let me keep this out of the way I'm trying to put it back to and then if you uh, didn't enter right here when it pulled back and turned down again right here, you could enter right there, definitely. And that's like a little breakout pullback short. Even though it didn't tick lower, it, it's close enough. And this one probably traps people because it's a failed second entry long. So there's an entry here and here. And this one, this first one is close to being um, a green circle, but I think it's good enough. And, it, and the entry is not this bar right here. It's when it broke below the bigger bar right here. Because now you got to move up, a pull back, and a second move up. And so if you went to a smaller chart, you'd see a second entry short there. Um, and then the next entry was this, that little trap right next to it. And if you were already in, you could add on there. I love those add on trades. Uh, they make you nervous at first, but once you realize what's happening, if it goes lower again, it just increases your odds, and uh, and that's when I like to add on. And there's actually a failed second entry long here. Um, you could have taken this trade. This is another one that could be green, 
But after that big a move down and so close to the low and this support right here, I just think you're better off to skip that one, even though it worked, because you notice it didn't go far before it started congesting again. And so um, I just didn't like it. And then um, then you then you you just kind of worked across here, but you couldn't get back to the to the trend line, and you finally got back right here. But that's a first entry. Notice the new low, uh, first entry pullback, and then you then you get a second entry right here. So that and it's off the trend line, and you do have that double top there, and it's a double test of this price level. So I really like that trade, and that turned out to be a huge move down. Um, and then you got another new low, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. Um, and this was the first break of the trend line uh, and second entry short. Um, you figure we're going to at least test this low and we might even go lower. Um, quick, easy scalp. Uh, I wouldn't say quick because it did pull back into that bar. And that's, and notice that, you know, somebody has brought up it's been brought up in the last couple of videos how big the bars are but notice how prices will break below them and pull back on just about all these bars so it's giving you an opportunity to get in uh, with a limit order however I, I always like to say this sometimes you're gonna miss the best trades trying to trying to be greedy and get a little better entry you know when it's really volatile like this I don't worry too much if you're good at reading the price action put your stop where it goes um, Put your entry where it goes and just try to get a little bit more out of it if you want. Um, either that or definitely use runners and scalp out the first one and hold, you know, hold a runner on the next one or scalp out a couple of them and hold a runner on a couple of them or however many you're trading, you know. Um, that's another way to do it. But you can skip to, before I forget, you can go to a different size chart. You can make, if you're using a volume chart, you can make it a little smaller. Uh, just don't make it so small that it moves so fast you can't read the price action and you start to make mistakes. You don't want to do that, so be careful with that. But you don't want to go breaking the rules so much that you know you really start to lose a bunch of money on each trade. Uh, the, the key is if you have to use a bigger stop, then get a bigger target. Okay, I apologize. My son has been in here twice interrupting me today, um, but I don't get to see him much. He's in college now, so I hate to complain about seeing him. But uh, anyway, um, I think we were talking about this. Oh, we were talking about this trade and, how, and the larger bars. And so, if you're using, a, if you got to use a bigger stop and it's more than two points, then increase your target to three points. Um, just offset it, uh, just the difference of what you have to use for your stop. Um, but anyway, there was a short right there, second entry short. And then we tried to go higher one more time, and I didn't like going short below that bar. It's way too, um, that's more of a bullish land. Even though it's got a red body, look at the bar, it closed in the upper two-thirds of the bar. So, but when this bar set up, and look how bearish it is. But again, you could have actually dropped a limit order and gotten in way back here. Because look, it broke, it, it opened lower and then backed up and then went down again. So it gives you, it, the market, at least on my chart, it's giving you great opportunities to get into these trades using our smaller stops. Uh, but again, just be careful because some of these, like, Here's one right here. If you put your, if you tried to get in this one, the limit order you got left behind. Uh, but most of these you could have entered with a limit order. I'm really impressed with how many that you actually could have entered with a limit order. But uh, and look at this boo, what it turned out to do. I mean, that one trade, you can get. Well, let's just see. It went to about 20.43, and your entry was up here at 20.49. That's a six-point move, and it's relatively relatively quick move uh, 13 so 112 and it reversed about so that's about a 15 minute move uh, for six points and you can't beat that so um, 
but notice here's here's this is not a great reversal pattern but notice what we've got you got the shorter term channel working down you got the break a big move down to a new low and then you come back and and you get a first entry short and then a pullback and a second entry short and that's a nice bearish bar it's real tempting to go short right there but you've already had a break and and a lot of times you'll get two legs down uh, if you did go short here and got trapped um, the only thing you can do is reverse or just exit when it turns back up but if you're paying attention go long right there uh, because that's kind of a usually a reversal pattern looks a little better than this it'll push on through real quick and come back and test the upper side and this one never really tested the upper side um, but you can see it trying to go short multiple times there um, but this is your real failed second entry short and that's a very bearish bar so uh, if you did go short there all you can do is exit when it turns back up and you shouldn't have lost more than a tick or so a couple of ticks there maybe um, and there is a double top there so it'd be easy to get confused on that one um, the only thing that you've really got going for you to keep you out of that one is all the overlap that's one reason not to enter the trend line that's working up um, and the fact that we've already had the break over here and this this is just how you have to look at the big picture and not just the pattern uh, people that don't realize that hey right once you've made this break here and as soon as you get a new low you got to be on the lookout for a new pattern the only way uh, I would take another short this far down as if you got a trap to the other side now if it would have turned up here and failed and turned down then I would have considered up maybe going short but you got the long trap or the the short trap before you got a long trap so um, and you're looking for a reversal anyway so uh, that's you just have to keep all those pieces together and that's what people miss sometimes they'll see a pattern uh, that sets up and they'll say well why this second entry short it looks great but if you look at the big picture no it doesn't look great uh, there's some there's depth but that's that's the whole idea is to make it look enticing to traders that don't understand what's really going on yet and uh, and they just see a nice second entry short with a nice bearish bar right there and they think hey I'm going short and they get trapped and the next thing you know it's moving the other direction but another clue too was where this bounced uh, it bounced right off of these two swings here but you may not have had that that's a little difficult to find um, even originally I had it normally it's going to come right off those highs and that may still be it because it still fits there you just had a little bit of an overshoot and then it catches right there but that's how I originally had that and so when it bounced there again um, and plus you've had more than a measured move down you know that at some point you're going to get caught short and it's going to reverse and go back and reset on the other side and that's what prices do they just go from support to resistance support for to resistance look at it coming off the low side back to the high side you go to the lower one it comes off the low side it goes back to the high side low side high side just keeps doing that over and over and uh, you can even get a trend line most likely looks like there's gonna be one right there maybe and the way I usually verify it is if it fits on the other side and there it does and there's probably a midline in there see that right there is a nice two-tier channel working down right there so you just have to learn how to see these lines I when you're new you're gonna have a hard time finding these channels or a harder time I should say they're not that difficult but I can glance at the chart and see it but I've been doing it for a long time and I have a lot of experience but as you get more experience you'll be able to just glance at the chart and see it too um, but I do I will tell you don't try to read the chart naked draw these lines because you will get fooled I mean a lot of times if I don't draw my lines on there I miss things so uh, don't think that you're too good to draw the lines uh, because you'll end up regretting it if you do and I can tell you from first hand because I've been down that road and made that mistake so um, 
anyway, I'm going to uh, wrap it up. This video is getting a little bit long here. Another excellent trading day. The volatility continues to be good. I hope you have had a good week. I hope you have a good trading day tomorrow. We'll be back again to do it Monday. Uh, have a great weekend. And um, this is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And I'll see you next time.